Thank you. Uh, my first time doing this. So uh, I hope I get all the caveats right that I'm supposed to manage around it. Um, shining since 2008, that's what we like to believe. It's a business uh, which started in, um, uh, you know, as an idea of working away from being merchandise heavy to being marketing heavy. We felt that the consumer was moving online and that's where we wanted to be. Not going to spend a lot of time. Everybody knows how uh, D2C has moved in India itself. Uh, Titan acquired us in 2016. And since then, it's been an amazing journey as a part of that. There are three things that I would love for you guys to take away. Uh, one is that how do we add value back to Titan? I think that's very important for many people. Um, as an entire jewelry outfit that, or a jewelry division, as we are looked at, uh, many times we get this question, are we competing or are we not? Uh, it actually is, is not really, uh, in our eyes, it doesn't work like that. Sure, there's overlap. I think overlap is always good for any business as well because you don't leave anything out in between. Uh, think of a continuum of jewelry where on one side you have investment, that's where gold jewelry starts off, and the other side you have consumption. And uh, our aim, I think, as a collective company would be that we should play across every aspect of this. And then the aim also is that on the consumption side, we should keep stretching it further and further ahead because that's what increases the addressable market for us also. Um, hold that thought for now because I'll come back to it once again later. We're really, uh, about a, a year back, and I was talking you know, to Joy Venkat, everybody, when we had our meeting, and I realized that you know, I, I, I always thought that what we were building was a business of jewelry. And um, it, some data threw something, uh, threw us off really. In the quarter of, uh, I think the second quarter last year, I realized that 80,000 people had written personalized notes um, through our, you know, gift a message program online. So what they do is that they type a narrative. I mean, they have a narrative for their family and friends and they say like, you know, uh, dear Anjali, I love you. This is our 10th anniversary. I hope you enjoy this hearing as much as I enjoyed choosing this for you. Looking forward to 10 more years. Messages like that. What I realized at that point was that while jewelry is really the form factor that they are buying, what they are trying to do is express an emotion. Whether they buy it for themselves or they buy it for somebody else, the expressing of an emotion is a very, very powerful aspect. And so Caraclean has a really large role to play in it. But we were failing. Because if you think of a computerized note, and all of you would have ordered something as a gift at some point, by the fourth day to about a year from now, that computerized note or that gift card that comes, which is printed and comes across, even though now we have cursive and all the fonts in it, it sort of gets lost. Uh, you, you don't tend to save it with the same enthusiasm that you have the jewelry with. Now, forward four years ahead, and you realize that four years ahead, you don't remember whether this was given for a birthday or was this given for an anniversary. And this happens in my life all the time because I love gifting jewelry. And we're not really clear whether it was for the fourth anniversary or the fifth anniversary, and now we're on the 17th anniversary. So there is just no way to know all of this. So as a, as a person who believes that my role is to express emotion, help the consumer express emotions, we are failing. And that became our single biggest challenge that we decided to take on, and we need to solve for it. Because ultimately, if we want to expand our category, what we really need to do is that for everybody who thinks about gifting, we need to make sure that jewelry becomes even more relevant. The price points are falling, and that's going to happen. If you look at uh, India versus US right now in data, we are, India is at $2,000 per capita income. Studded jewelry is at about $1,000 if you take the top 10 brands and put it together. That's about the ASP spend. Take US, $44,000 per capita income. Studded jewelry ASP is $250. Uh, that amount of space is available for us to go down. And we, that's why I believe that the price point at which we operate is a very nice price point. We could take away from a lot of other categories because the highest amount of emotion involved in giving a gift is in jewelry. You don't tend to give this just without any, you know, without any depth to that relationship that you have with the person. But if you bring it at the right price point 
and you can add and you can protect a way to save these emotions into that, I think you could add a lot of value to it. That's the journey we're on this year. Um, not a lot more to give away on that, but during the course of the year, you'll see that. Speaking of the addressable market right now and how we've seen it grow, the five-year care for jewelry searches has been about 17%, whereas Caritlane itself has been about 47% on growth. Now, I read a um, very nice uh, McKinsey article which spoke about if you were to break down growth and look at it in different ways, how does it play out? Um, there are three parts that they broke growth down into. One part was shift in bringing a new category into your business or expanding market as a simple, I mean, in simple English for that. The second part they spoke about was taking away share from existing markets on that. And the third piece that they spoke about was a new paradigm. If you were able to bring something new, new paradigm doesn't happen very often. In our case, we believe that bringing digital brings a new paradigm to it or changing ASP and bring it significantly lower brings a new paradigm to it. But the most important part is the combined forces of these two. The fact that we've been able to bring average selling price of jewelry at a significantly lower price and at the same time make it available before somebody walks into a store, I think changed the way this whole thing operates for us. And that's been the, that's been the growth for us across this whole thing. If we are able to crack emotions the way we think about it, we think there's a very large play to make in the, against the gifting category itself. Just the participation or just the searches that happen for occasions and gift segment is about 362 million at that. And even if 10% of that could convert into jewelry purchase, not just for us, for everybody, that's a huge number that that could go on. This is the challenge that we want to take on in the journey that we are now going forward from this point on. Our past uh, has been such that from 2008 to 2012, we took a challenge like that. We grew 10x. 12 to 16, we found something. We grew 10x. 16 to 21, we grew 10x. And our hope is that this is the same 10x we take on for the next four to five years as well. Just to give you a sense of numbers, um, um, one part of it got a little extended or deleted. Um, we were at 16 stores. We're at about 137. I'm going to talk about it later as to how we go about this. The growth typically for us has been in the 47 is the average of that whole thing. But what's important to see is that most businesses in D2C, and you guys cover a lot of them, either have been focused on growing the top line or have been focused on efficiency. Very few businesses have been able to do both at the same time. And we've been fairly efficient in the way we've still managed to grow at a fairly high pace on this. Our addressable market for us is very clear. It's the global Indian. It is something that we took on two years back and said that, you know, it's um, the, the borders are breaking. People are going in and out very easily. The conversations between, there was a time where your influencer you'd look at would only be an Indian influencer li living over here. I was talking to a New York based influencer as uh, we were working, doing some work with her on that. Um, she's a, a uh, 22 year old girl having 1.2 million Indians as followers on that 1.2 million Indians are definitely not following her from America. And she does only Indian um, content on that. All her followers, basically about 80% of her followers come from India. So if you think about it, that if Indians are following consumers over there and consumers over there are following Indian influencers over here, do we really need to think about this as, as a geographical restriction or should we be now be thinking about this as Indians living anywhere in the world? And that thought process leads us to thinking about global Indians. We seeded our international business and our thought towards global India about two years back doing that. We did a lot of work towards it. Um, at this point, with about five or six people working on that, it's a very robust, fast growing pace um, part of our business. We're investing heavily on it. Um, what you see as the inefficiency of the entire PL right now comes from the fact that that's an area of growth we are investing towards. There are about um, 100 crore high margin business opportunities with these individuals sitting outside. Uh, if you look at just US alone in this, it's about half of that. 
and their average uh, salary, I mean, average um, per capita income is at $90,000 for Indians living there, 2x the average of an average American over there. So it's a huge opportunity in itself. And we feel that we're very well poised to once again go after that. The nature of design and work we do lends towards this audience very well. This is our playbook. We like to call it that. These are the pillars that we work on. I'll go through each of these things individually, but effectively um, these seven, eight pillars is what makes us happen, what makes the 10X growth work for us. As an enabler, obviously we're in the business of jewelry. So it's very important to us. And our origin for a lot of us is that uh, we take on arts and we decide that how do we take this and make this thing work for the audience we are going after. We contemporize the style that we are going, I mean, the, the old Indian arts and work towards it. There's one particular one I'll talk about. That's Meena Kari and I'm Ling on this. We launched with Lotus as our first collection in 2016. In 2018, we launched Butterfly. Butterfly is a 12 piece collection. And in jewelry, numbers don't rise that fast. But that 12 piece collection is now worn by roughly 3 lakh Indians. So that's the power that something like this goes. And I have seen myself where consumers tell us, oh, butterfly wala brand, or, you know, that uh, when they see somebody else wearing it, they can recognize it as well also. It's also one of the most copied designs on Amazon that one can find. Like about 20 brands try and sell the same thing. This is our real way of doing Omni. We obsess about... Um, uh, omni to a crazy level. We, I would say that we are at 20% of the ideas that we are. There's another 80% of growth possible for us in this. If you look at Faridabad, it's, a, it's an example I've put out over here for you to see. Faridabad is not a jewelry center. There are no jewelry stores in that place. There's no, there is one jewelry market slightly away from there, but it's not directly where uh, the audience sits. We, before the store opening, were having about 249, um, uh, I mean, it's 2,49 sessions, uh, 2,49,000 sessions, sorry. We had a business conversion of about 0.5% and the data that you can see through resulting in about uh, 3.51 crores of business at that point. We opened a store over there. We drop in a store based on this data, not basis of where the market is and what we would have done traditionally on that. In a location where there's no other jewelry store where there's hardly any retail itself also on that, just that there's good parking. So people can come by and do that. And that's very important for our customers. Um, between November 21 to Feb 22, you can see how the numbers have changed. The sessions are slightly lower at that point. It's a function of uh, how much traffic we were going after in that region as well. But the business conversion jumps 3x. It goes to 1.53 times. The catchment results in eight crores of business for us. And this is the addressable opportunity we are going after. It drives both growth as well as efficiency. It's just sheer understanding of how we look at data. We've identified 112 catchments like that this year for us to go after because there's a threshold beyond which we go after. Similarly, we will invest in more such activities which will take us next year into figuring out what more catchments can we go after. Eighty-five percent of our online orders are influenced. Sixty-eight percent of these customers, sixty-eight percent of our orders that we go after, where we can identify n is equal to one. We can identify the customer's journey from the time he started browsing, from the keyword he came to, to the actual piece that he bought. That's the level at which we are right now. The deeper we get into this, the better we will get at you know having to spend less on marketing, but more on converting people across this and improve the throughput of what we do. Um, our end goal is actually matching customer. So it's N is equal to one as a customer, Q is equal to one at uh, production and inventory that we need to keep, which is relevant for the catchment itself. We have over a period of time been reducing our SKU count. Most, you know, it's, it's counterintuitive for a lot of people when they hear it first time, but we've gone from 8,000 to 6,500 now down to 4,000. And we just want to keep, we want to find that there are 118 need states that people think about when they want to buy jewelry. These are keywords that people have in their mind when they think about it. First, we want to solve for these by having ample choice in each of these. Once we solve for that, I think we'll be in a position to go after more as well. But for that, we really don't need to make, we don't need to have a 10 or 12,000 
piece catalog because what it results in that I have visibility, but I don't have supply. And that dissonance causes a lot of loss of sale for us in the business. The last piece on this digital piece is the single view of a customer. We've built a module called One View, where every interaction that a customer has, whether it's online, through a chat, through any part of our, in any of our systems as well, we have a single person, we have a single view of that for our salesperson to see when he walks into the customer. He will also know whether it's an irate customer, not an irate customer, customer already placed in order, not placed in order, at every touch point that information is available to them. We build this by incentivizing, obviously, but um, we also make sure that we manage with data privacy. So. I was talking about the catalog. From 5,800, we brought it down to 4,029. That's what we've done. Uh, very focused on it. Uh, have to thank an ex-Titan board member, Irina, for helping us do this work. Uh, twice in a year, we have reviews on this. We remove all our low performers. Uh, the next piece is what I think interests us a lot. Every time we launch a new collection, we artificially seed traffic to those collections. Uh, we artificially incentivize salespeople to make sure that they are showing it more to people and trying to get a sales throughput on that. The combination of these two gives us data which tells us whether we should back this collection or not back it. So I'll give you an example. We launched three collections for Akshay Tritya, we realized which is the one we want to back. And we went after Borla, which was the collection we went after because of the data that through, came through this. And that improves throughput once again a lot for us. It also allows us within the collection what to back uh, far more than what, any other product that we are going after. It enables calculated risk on inventory. And we hope that you know, while we'll go inefficient a little bit for now, but in the long run, all this will teach us to become far more efficient on our inventory turns. There is, to make all this happen, the secret sauce really is the people who work at Carrot Lane. And I really want to give you a flavor of what the company is like, because you'd not get a sense. It's an energy that we work with. Yeah. We're working with carrots on carrots in every lane. Body, body, vibe, ginger, heat, and pen, and gay, some dish, have a dish. We got the jewelry for every day. First one to do it, the best in the game. Jewelry for juniors and for your birthday. Our lane is the future, we're paving the way. Carrot lane, carrot lane. By Rangal Vyabara, Mugatil, Sandosham, conversion target, they make money, then it. Serving our customers, best in the class, you know, carrot lane, Mari, you know, may you lay. Money for luxury, punish kids out of reach, nudges on nudges. We do it easy. Pick up your phone and call up the leads. Diamonds we sell. We do it with speed. Customer conversion, we're the strongest when we're working. Consistency, hacky, hamare pass, gene hai that you can wear while you're working. Up your side, some asya, okay, solution. I'll bring out the audience, the whole world consuming. Hamare pass, cash flow, man, power 10x, hit the promo code. Check out the customer base. We do things our own way. A functional office, we never copy. We are all running the same. Ram not our coffee, ham latte resources. Meet the objectives we make. It's a capital L in the lane. Don't forget the name. Carrot lane, carrot lane. Keep them coming, guys. Keep I'm coming guys, ideas, ideas, stick to the deadline, stick to the deadline. Neeram, neeram, ye hai apna time, ye hai apna time. Aajao, aajao, it's our time to shine like diamonds in the sky. Only you, only you, now must I let them miss it. Clients we keep in touch, Archa hit only six. Metrics are in check, always improving the self. 70% pretty depth, 3D we do the print. Technology the best. I'm omnipresent, online se leke ghar, pe darwaze se. दरवाजे प्रदर्शन करते आपके जैसे चमकता सितारे ये है कैरेट लेन हमारे गहने पहनते हैं सब सारे देखने में है कितना प्यारे वो कीप ऑन कमिंग गाइस कीप ऑन कमिंग गाइस आइडियाज आइडियाज स्टिक टू द डेडलाइन स्टिक टू द डेडलाइन मेरा मेरा ये है अपना टाइम ये है अपना टाइम आ जाओ आ जाओ इट्स आवर टाइम टू शाइन लाइक डायमंड्स इन द स्काई फॉर यू मोर यू कैरेट्स ऑन कैरेट्स इन एवरी लेन एक बड़े बड़े वाद जिनके हीरे पहनेंगे सब देश या विदेश वी गॉट द ज्वेलरी फॉर Every day, first one to do it, the best in the game. Jewelry for juniors and for your birthday. Our lane is the future. We're paving the way. Carrot lane, carrot lane. Every time I see this, I have a bunch of actors. I feel working in carrot lane on that. Um, it's um, you know, the tagline for us right now, and we've put this as a team for ourselves is "Yeh hai apna time." And we really feel that the next five years for us are very crucial. At the same time, every business has a golden period. I think for jewelry industries like that, um, 
uh, Venkat once very long back told me, and I used to think 1,000 crores, how does he even talk, think about that? I think 2007, 10 to the power of 10 that he spoke of. And it feels like this is our time to make something like that happen. We see, we have the ideas, we have the energy, and we have the focus to make something like this grow. Uh, we work towards improving every single day. Uh, in all of you here, um, you know, I read something beautiful, which I, uh, which, which always stays with me and every audience that I try and talk to. Um, the first thing I look at is a customer and, uh, in all of you, I think, you know, it's very important for me to think about that as well. If you think our words are simple and if you think that you can speak about it, I think it would really help us if everybody could help us find more customers as well. Every time you write, it does bring us that. So we really look forward to growing. Thank you so much for listening. And this is a very exciting phase of Caratlin, and I hope you guys see great dividends from it. Thank you. Thank you.